Uh, we should make a list about what the colleges have cost, and they said, Samir, no. You don't make a list of what the colleges cost. That's up to us. We'll figure that out. You just make a list of colleges. But people say that the Indian Americans haven't had privilege. We've had so much privilege in my generation because we had parents who would do anything to make sure that we had a chance. They saw Samir now, which is in, who lives in a beautiful place in San Francisco, and has three kids. And Samir said, and, you know, they said to Samir, Samir, you're, you're giving your kids everything you can afford. And Samir said, yes, I am. You taught me that. And uh, his parents said, Samir, yes, uh, you are giving everything you can afford. That's what we taught you. But you should remember, we gave you more than we could afford. How do we take that set of, in this country, that sense that immigrant sense of wanting a better life for their kids, of doing everything that they could so that their kids had a shot at the American dream. That is the contribution our community has. And if we bring that sentiment into our politics, I think that uh, is the biggest thing we can get. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give that call to Mr. Thomas. suggesting meetings and pushing us to have activities, uh, it certainly wouldn't be what we have here. So I want to thank you for keeping us disciplined and staying on top of all of us so that we have this presence. So thank you, Rishi. And, you know, with Ro, <laughs> yeah, Ro and I are now are in a very good way, and I'm very proud to say we're linked, uh, and we'll be linked forever. Uh, and, and I'm very proud of that, you know, to have the two of us being elected at the same time to represent Silicon Valley in different capacities. Uh, he's in a much, uh, he's in a very difficult position, but he's been very bold, right? And when others have, some have been, but certainly very few have been as bold as, as Roe has been as a freshman Congress member, and I'm very proud of that. Thank you. So, yeah. But actually, just to see what Roe is doing, to see what some other of our congressional uh, allies are doing, uh, it emboldens us in Sacramento. Uh, I mean, we recognize the important role California has. And so it really gives us kind of wing, wind beneath our wings, me and Kansan and others that are, that are fighting uh, for all Californians. And so it's important. It's even, even in some of the battles in DC, which are challenging, which even when the Democrats feel they may be losing some of these battles, the messaging they're putting out there and the organization, the, 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 the messaging they're putting out in the fight helps us to organize at the ground level. It helps us to motivate one another. And so we can't put too much emphasis on how important it is to continue to, to beat back uh, what's coming from the White House and the majority in Congress. And you know, I, 
I've had the privilege of, of course, of working uh, with cancer and days. When I say they're family, I don't, I just don't say that. Kind of, uh, just because it's a nice thing to say. Uh, you know, they've been worked very closely for many years and battled <laughs> for many years in a council minority. Um, but I think it, it, this were examples of your, if you're bold, you stick to your principles. Uh, not only can the community win, but you can also be successful. And I think Hanson is, is definitely a, a model of that, yeah. along with Daisy. <laughs> Daisy's my favorite. <laughs> uh, and and I, I do want to say a few words before I, but I do want to also you know, recognize Dr. Jopra. My family's known Dr. Jopra since the, uh, since the 80s, so when we first came here. And so I've always known him as, as someone that's always been active because he got my parents active in the community back in the 80s as well. So, you know, I was reunited in a sense after I finished law school and came back to the community. And it's been amazing to see how much the community has grown, but it's taken leaders like Dr. Jopra. So I don't think there's enough recognition that you can get, uh, but, but I'm glad that folks are recognizing uh, the work you've done. And, and and I, you know, there's a lot of folks. I mean, Yogi and I've known each other since then too, early 90s. I uh, we went to college with my brother, and so it was nice to be able to come back home and have people that I already knew that were making things happen before I even uh, got re-engaged in my local community. And so I think that they get it. I know Yogi gets it, and Dr. Job and others that have been doing it for 20, 30 years. And a lot of us have benefited from that foundation, as Roe was saying, uh, that was laid. Um, and, and so I really appreciate because sometimes we benefit and we don't even recognize how we benefit from all the work that's been done, especially by our parents and those that came before us, as Ro was saying. And it was really cool to see the panel with, with, with Raj, and, and we couldn't have done this <laughs> not too long ago. But, and, and a couple were missing, right? We couldn't have done this. And, and that's an amazing thing, that in a very short number of years, uh, when I first got on the council, I was the first uh, along with Susie Nakwa, the first Indian Americans elected to any city council in the entire county of Santa Clara. And now, we're representing cities throughout the entire Bay Area, throughout the entire state. We're representing, uh, we have representation. And that means a lot to me because it gives us, it's not just, we're not just a voice of course, we're not just a voice of the Indian American community. We're representing everyone that's, in our, that's, that's uh, part of our constituency. But it's important that we give, give that sacrifice, because it's about that sacrifice and, and about the work. And I'm just going to say three things, three messages in terms of what I was asked to speak about, in terms of you know, how to run for office, what have you. I think the panelists did a great job of, of talking about that. Uh, when I think about it, and this is something that it's really important for candidates to remember, and I know those that are here, uh, the elected officials know that, uh, is all politics is local. And you've heard it a million times, but I've seen so many candidates, when they get in the thick of campaigns, they forget that. They forget that. Uh, when, when someone comes to me and, uh, and says, hey, I want to run for full office, the first thing I say, I want to run for city council someday. I want to run you know, for school board. The first thing I ask them is, is there a neighborhood association where they live? Most of the time, they can't answer that question. And I said, well, you have, so you have some work to do in terms of really knowing who your neighbors are, who your people are. If, this, if we had an election in June, we would be here right now, right? Because as much as we love all of you, <laughs> we would need to be out where our voters are, out in the neighborhoods, out in the community. So always remember that if you really want to know, if you really want to represent someone, you have to know where they're coming from, what they're thinking, what they believe in. Not what you believe. What you believe in matters. It matters to the voters, certainly. But if you don't understand who you're representing and who they are, then you're, you're never going to truly be a voice for them. And so that's why. You know, when we, when we run our elections and we're all over the place, Rose all over the place, I'm all over the place, it's not just to be seen. It's also, it's we're getting feedback. Every work time we go somewhere, whether it's knock on someone's door or going to a community event or a neighborhood watch game, right? And I know you do a lot of that in Saratoga, and it's important. Uh, and of course, it has the, the double effect of now you're creating a presence for yourself. So it does have a political benefit, but more importantly, it allows you to be effective in representing folks. <coughs> Second thing I'll say, I think this matches with, with uh, being Indian, being South Asian, whether you're Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Christian, or just believe in, believe in, a, in being kind to one another, um, is selflessness. You really, you know, the work has to be selfless. There's a big problem 
in politics, and, and I think it, it's created with ego, especially once you get into a position of power. You allow that position of power to dictate your actions. And at some point, you see elected officials believe that the seat that they hold belongs to them. It never belongs to the elected official, ever. And we have to remember, get back to our roots, you know, in terms of being selfless. But what we're doing is not about building ourselves up as individuals. It's not about getting our name in lights. It's about using our position of influence and power to do the, to do the right thing and to give voice to the voices. And that's why, as, as Richard was talking about how it goes, when you watch the social media and all that, look at the messaging that he's sending out there of how powerful that is to be able to use a voice like his to give voice to the voiceless in many ways. Right? Canson does that. You know, Canson is, you know, I think they just made just left. Um, Canson is a very bold leader. I think a lot of times he's known people more in a social setting, coming to events, what have you. But he's always been a very, uh, a very selfless in terms of as a leader. He doesn't care if he gets credited, right? He'll do what's right. He doesn't care. Gosh, why don't you go ahead and lead it? Why don't you want you go talk to the media? You know, I don't need to. He knows who he is and he knows why he's there. And so it's really important that you don't forget that because it's easy to forget that sometimes when you get a lot of attention and you have a lot of people want you to come to events and they, they treat you. Um, they treat you very specially. Uh, sometimes you can actually get to one's head. But remember, they're treating you special because you hold a seat that's very special and that has value. And so never forget that you're just borrowing that seat for the moment. But at the end of the day, it belongs to the people. And uh, the final thing I'll say is you have to be bold. And uh, I think that with everyone that's won, um, when you see them win seats, and, and, and you, you may have seen this sometimes, you go to neighborhood meetings and they have a candidate in debate council members or school board members running. And whether you agree with someone's position or not, I bet that you had a positive sense of, the, you, had a, you had a positive feeling about those that were very clear about where they stood. Even if you didn't agree with, I would go to neighborhood meetings, and I'd go to some areas in Evergreen where you know, a, little bit more, a little bit more conservative compared to other areas in my district, and I'd say, yes, I'm very much in favor of legalizing marijuana. And then I would explain why. And so whether someone agreed with my position or not, Afterwards, they say, you know, I really appreciate you, it's not to say where, where you stand, but why you stand, why, or why you take that stand, when other candidates won't kind of go in the middle and wish, well, I'm not sure, because they, they don't want to offend anyone. 